Hey everyone, welcome to another video from Cracking the Fang Interviews. Today I'm going to be talking about a new problem which has been asked at Amazon, Apple and Google frequently. Uh, this is not one of the standard lead code problems, uh, but I've picked up uh, something from Geeks for, for uh, something very similar from Geeks for Geeks. So what we are asked to do here is um, we, we are asked to find a point um, in the array is given where maximum intervals overlap. So before I go into much detail, uh, let's see what an interval is quickly. So an interval is um, something which could be, uh, you know, a tuple in Python, which has a start and an end, essentially. So I could say I start at index or time um, zero and I end at time one as an interval. Um, another um, you know aspect of an interval would, could be something that starts and ends at the same index even though uh, the distance or length of the interval is zero it is it is still an interval because it has it follows the definition where uh, there is a start and end uh, parameter defined and what we are asked to do here is we we are asked to fi find what point in this time axis t do maximum intervals overlap so the way it would look like is as an example if you have a lot of intervals which have overlapping time periods and i'm gonna make sure i color this for ease of view uh, this is a point at which uh, three of the intervals overlap so we'd be we'd be looking for this time period t prime where uh, three intervals overlap all right, let's look at the problem in more detail. Again, I have a link in the description for the Geeks for Geeks link where the problem is uh, defined with an example. And uh, the way we are given the data to operate on is uh, there are two arrays. Um, I'd like to call this the start array, which says where does the interval start and an end array, which says where does the interval end. So if I were to draw this out for you, it would look something like two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna just take a small section to sketch. And the first interval is from index one and goes all the way to index four, start and end. The second is from two to five. And the third would be from nine to 12 and so on. So just looking at these two intervals, the idea is the overlap between them is this area. All right, so, so far we are clear on the concept of intervals. Uh, let's move on to understand a little bit more detail on what does it mean for intervals to overlap and how do we check that? So if you have two intervals, let's call this interval A and interval B. And interval A has two indexes S1 and E1 start and end and interval B has two indexes uh, start two and end two. When do these two intervals overlap? How do we check that condition? And this, um, this is gonna be useful for us uh, even for later videos and problems that we solve. So I just wanna set the fundamentals of interval with uh, this problem that we have in hand. So if you notice, intervals overlap when start of one interval is less than or equals to end of the other interval. So first condition is S1 is less than or equal to E2. And uh, the start of the second interval is less than the end of the first interval. By that I mean S2 is less than or equal to E1. Now, we touched upon this case where we have an interval which starts which starts and ends at the same period. Do they overlap? So let's take an example. I'm at uh, time two and I have two intervals which with both their start and end equals to two and the second interval having the same start and end. Now, do these intervals overlap? According to this definition, yes, they do. And even if you think about it uh, practically, 
they do have you know a one to one overlap even though the distance between the intervals is uh, of the intervals respectively is zero so now that i've set this context uh, one thing that is important to note if you observe in here in in the diagram that we started with to be able to check for this condition we definitely need to order these intervals imagine if i give you uh, two intervals um, one is uh, 3 comma 4 and the other is uh, 1 comma 4 uh, if i uh, if this is the given input right this would be the start array in our given question uh, this would be the end array and if we sketch this out this is from 3 to 4 and um, uh, this is from 1 to 4 uh, and if we if we were to check overlap for this using our original condition we want to make sure we are evaluating with the first the first interval to the second and not vice versa that this condition does not hold the order um, or in other words sorting of the intervals is important you always start with the in interval that starts earlier so that you go sequentially and check check it with the next immediately next interval and uh, we'll look at this in a little more detail in the code in uh, on the next slide so let's look at the code for the problem um, and as i described earlier we are asked to find uh, the t at which um, we, we have the maximum overlap so the first thing we do here is sort them sort both the uh, start and um, the end or exit in this case uh, for both the uh, interval arrays that are given to us and what we do here is um, we, we define a few variables one is guest in which tells us uh, how many guests are in at this point and we'll later increment uh, this variable i'll get into more details there and another variable which um, which says what is the maximum number of guests that we have um, uh, given and um, also the time is uh, the first uh, element of the array so what we are doing here essentially is saying uh, let's just look at the first element of the array before we do any processing and uh, the first element definitely indicates that there's at least one guess uh, meaning at there's at least one interval that has started this problem is asking you to find the maximum number of guests in other words the maximum number of intervals that overlap or um, guests that are in a room um, uh, for overlapping intervals so it's an interval problem but uh, named differently in terms of guess and you notice i is at uh, one year so you've essentially taken the first start uh, um, here and uh, i is going to be pointing to the next index uh, whereas j still points um, sorry j still points here uh, you've counted the start of the first interval that's why guess in is initialized to one and max guess is also initialized to one and what we want to do is now since both our arrays are sorted we want to go sequentially and see if there was an entry or an exit the way we do that we have a while loop we are going through both these um, arrays at the same time um, and the i pointer is uh, to start with is one ahead of the j pointer and if uh, the if there is if the start at the i pointer is less than equal to an exit what does this mean it means that um, um, there has been an entry so somebody is um, uh, now entered your room or there's a new interval that started for example uh, in this case this is interval one this is interval two this is the start you're looking at and your j is um, uh, your i is here and your j is here and you're able to say there's a new interval i prime that's that's that, uh, that has now started because j is uh, uh, j is greater than i in in the time dimension and if that's the case you increment the number of guests means there's an entry into the interval or in the room and if the current number of guests is greater than max number of guests you you update both the time where you know the the overlap hap happened uh, again we are taking a note of the start array in terms of time and you also increment i to the next index meaning now you're gonna you've counted this guest in now let's look at the next uh, index and say has there been an entry or an exit so far right else if this is not the case meaning there's the exit uh, time is uh, less than 
the uh, the entry time you subtract a guest meaning there's been an exit or an interval has ended like in this case uh, let me change the color for so this event has occurred compared to this event in time so you're you're essentially going through the time axis and saying what has happened so far and counting um, uh, incrementing or decrementing uh, based on that and you uh, increment j to the next index uh, since you have already accounted for uh, this event now and at, at towards the end you just spend the maximum number of guests which is uh, max guests and also the time at which this happened i hope the idea was clear uh, please leave your comments and questions down below and thank you so much for uh, watching and following us on youtube um, uh, and please like share and subscribe uh, for uh, more exclusive content and interview questions